Hello everyone, Reese my JC Models here, and we've got a quite a special video for you for this one. Um, we have the Citroen H van, uh, this one just here. Um, but what I'm going to do is something a bit special with this one because this one was uh, kindly gifted to us by our partners um, at Active Scale Models. Um, I'll chuck the link to them in the uh, description below. But what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm going to make this one look like um, like over here in uh, the UK we have what I call a burger van. So it's like a, like a hot food van. So this one's actually, the actual kit is uh, a left hand drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can convert this one into a right hand drive. Um, and yeah, we're going to do all the, the, the little details in the, in the back there. And so instead of it being a crepe van, it's going to be... Um, sort of a bit of a beaten up kind of so it'll be the sort of vehicle sort of burger van that you'll see parked up at the side of roads or on industrial estates throughout the country so let's uh, i'm not going to do a box with this one because i think there's plenty of this one out there but we're gonna, gonna jump straight into it and um yeah we're gonna convert this one into a to a, a right hand drive So as you can see here, there's quite a lot of work to be done. Um, the little hole that you can see just there was um, uh, the glove box at one point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blank that glove box off and with some uh, street sheet plastic just there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blank that off and make that the new dashboard. And as you can see where my finger is there is the um, the old dashboard and sort of like driving compartment so what we're going to do is we're going to take that back take get rid of all that sort of stuff off of there and convert it to the other side so what you can see what i'm about to do now is i'm about to measure out the um, steering column and the pedal controls from the left hand side to transfer them to the right hand side it's a fairly easy process so what you do is you butt up the ruler against the side of the the side of the dashboard there take a measurement and then um, transfer that measurement to the right hand side and then that way you can accurately put the steering wheel in the middle of the dashboard rather than it being off to the side What you can see there is I'm about to cut some plastic to fill the hole in the, the glove box on the left, uh, the right hand side there. Um, I will probably um, put in a faux dashboard on the left hand side when I've done the conversion. Uh, just that this was a little bit fiddly to get the right sort of plastic in there and the right um, depth. I was originally just going to blank the hole back of the dashboard like you can see I'm trying to figure out there and then fill in the hole but it wouldn't look so good and I think it add quite a lot of weight to the front of the vehicle so it would, it would sit a bit funny so what I'm going to do uh, you'll see in the next couple of clips is mark off where the glove box is as you can see just there and then um, I'll fill the glove box hole with the, the sheet plastic just there and then um, yeah we'll put the, the faux dashboard on the other side So as you can see here, I'm just about to do the first cut for the, um, the glove box fill in there. Um, I absolutely love working with plastic and sheet plastic because it's quite um, easy to use. It does take a few cuts through, however, as you can about to see here, um, it does take me a few passes to, to cut through the plastic. But for scratch building, I absolutely adore using sheet plastic. It's so easy to use, it's easy to fill. You can also use sheet plastic to fill gaps. So if you've got a gap in a body line, you can use that to fill the gap there and then sand it down without any issue rather than having to mess around with any fillers. Um, I still will use a filler, but I do quite like using sheet plastic like this to, to fill gaps and um, yeah, just, just general scratch building really with, uh, with sheet plastic.
So here's a good tip that I'm obviously not doing very well in this, in this clip here is always cut away from yourself because if you were to slip, uh, the knife I'm using there is what they call a Swan Morton. It's a surgical grade uh, cutting blade there. And as you can see, um, I'm not doing a very good job there. Um, uh, if you slip on uh, with plastic like that and go through, like as you can see, my thumb was in the way there, um, that would go straight through my thumb. So yeah, top tip, always cut away from yourself. So as you can see, I've got a pair of side cutters there. I'm just going around the chassis, cutting them there, the chassis off of the sprue. What I will do also is um, do a bit of cleanup with uh, a long flat file just to um, get rid of any nubs or anything like that that may cause a uh, fitment issue later on with the chassis, uh, with the body even. Um, just, just to make it nice and, and flat and square. So here we go, like I said, I've got a nice flat uh, straight file there. Um, I believe this is one of the Flory model sanders. Um, and I'm just taking off all of the sprue nubs and making sure that everything's flat so we're not going to get any issue later on when coming to fit the body. So what I'm about to do now is I'm about to glue in the bottom of the seat just so I can get an idea of where the pedals are going to line up, where the steering column is going to line up and where the dashboard is going to line up. It just makes things a little bit easier when doing the conversion rather than having to guess or kind of um, not measure accurately where the, the pedals and things are going to be. So yeah, in this next clip it will just be me popping in the, the seat base and then going from there. So another good tip is to get a good pair of side cutters, like the one I'm using just there. The good thing about side cutters is you can cut the part away from the sprue gate um, quite close to the part without actually getting too close. So you get quite minimal cleanup with them, but you still get quite a nice cut um, without causing any damage to the part. So what I'm doing there is, although you can't really see because my hands are in the way, but what I'm doing there is what they call dry fitting. So I've cut the parts out of the off the sprue, and now I'm fitting it to the model to make sure that the parts are fit and there's no more cleanup that I have to do. Another good tip is good glues. So what you'll see in a second is um, I'll use what they call Tamiya Extra Extra Thin. So the good thing is with that is that it dries quite quickly. So the part that you can see I'm using there is quite fiddly. And the good thing is with Extra Thin is that it will bond in quite quickly. Whereas the glue, as you can see in the back of the picture there, Tamiya Thin is a very, very good glue. And I um, also use that as well. Extra Thin is good for parts like this because they bond quite quickly and it does dry quite quick too.
So as you can see, I'm just popping in the second seat base there. This will give me a really good idea of where things are going to sit, um, how much I have to take out of the, the middle console there. As you, I don't know if you can see in there that there's the um, where the gear sticks and that sort of thing go. Just gives me a good idea of placement on things that are inside the cab there. So what I'm doing there is I'm filling the hole in the middle of the chassis there for the um, gear stick. What I'll do is I will drill it over to the, the right slightly more because what you'll see is that it's quite central for the left hand drive whereas if you look at pictures of the right hand drive they're further towards the driver's seat on the right hand drive variant of the H-Van. Although I think they did use a lot of um, left hand drives in the UK for the H-Van. So, time to do some filling. What I'm doing there is I'm filling the holes for the um, gear stick and what I'll do is I'll move it over to the right hand side that you'll see in the next clip. But what I use to fill is something called sprue goo. So sprue goo is made from old Tamiya Extra Thin and cut up bits of sheet plastic. Like I said earlier in the film, um, I love using sheet plastic because it's good for filling. So, and that's what you do is you use some sheet plastic cut up in little squares to pop into the, extra, the old extra thin there and as you can see that's quite an old bottle there I need to make some more but um, yeah you cut it up into little squares to make sort of like a goopy texture because um, the, the plastic will melt in the, the old extra thin and then that way it makes a good medium for making filler with. Again, as you can see there, I'm just using some sheet plastic to fill holes with. Um, rather than it being melted down into sprue goo, I'm actually just using the sheet plastic itself just to fill some holes. And then what I'll do is I'll come, on, come in later on with a sander and just sand that all flat. So just putting the lid back on the sprugu there because it does evaporate quite quickly. So what I'm doing there is just popping the last little bits of glue on to make sure that that um, plastic card's not gonna go anywhere and that it's um, nice and strong. So as you can see there, I've got the holes nice and filled and um, ready for glue, uh, drying and sanding off to uh, pop onto the next bit of the, the conversion. Right then, so what I'm doing there is I'm drilling the hole for the steering column. Um, this is a little bit fiddly because as you'll see in a second, it takes a lot of turn and throwing with the dashboard. Um, the plastic, although it's quite thick, 
is quite easy to drill through with a, a decent pin vise as you can see there. Um, so this is just me fitting the steering column, making sure I've got the right size drill bit for the steering column, which is all looking good there. And then we'll bring in uh, a little file just to clean up any um, access uh, plastic that I've missed with the, with the drill bit. So what we'll then do is we'll then use the dashboard and the steering column just to make sure that it all fits perfectly. There we go, so the steering column fits quite nicely. Bringing in the introduction of the dashboard just to make sure that that all fits nice. Um, the good thing is that obviously I've not had to do anything with the, the holes in the kit for the dashboard, so the dashboard will still fit where it was before. Just I've adapted it to be a right hand drive and drilled the holes in a different place for the steering column. Right then, so the next job is to cut the pedals out of the sprue gate, clean it up and get them ready to um, be converted. So what you can see I'm doing there is I'm just taking a knife and um, just <laughs> getting away there. Um, just cleaning up the sprue knobs and getting rid of any, um, any edges and that sort of stuff on there. What you can see there is the pedals being test fit to the new side. The problem I did come in with that is, I don't know if you can see it very well there, but there's a little black line that holds all the pedals together. Um, that did get in the way of the steering column, so what I had to do is, as you can see what I'm doing there, is I'm just sizing up um, where things go. So obviously because it will be right hand drive, so I've flipped it round, like I've just said there, um, and I will have to take that little bit of black plastic off just so that all the pedals fit in a nice place. So as you can see there, I'm just cutting the pedals off the pedal boards, um, which is a blank bit of plastic on the bottom. This did prove quite tricky, um, so if you are going to do this conversion, um, obviously bear that in mind, it is quite a tricky, fiddly little piece. But once you've got them all cut out um, individual as individual pedals, you can place the pedals where you want them then. So one thing I did find helpful, um, as you can see there, I'm drilling out holes for the, the pedals because obviously where I've cut them off of the, the pedal box, um, there was nothing to give them some stability. So what I did was 
Um, I then drilled some holes for the, the pedals to go into rather than having to just kind of free float, which um, also didn't look very scale as well. Um, obviously with this, the good thing is that the accelerator pedal uh, will wire in uh, an accelerator cable, so you can see that, and also a clutch cable there as well. But obviously doing it this way makes it a little bit easier. So as you can see there, the three holes drilled for the, pedal, the pedals and also the hole drilled for the steering column. So what we're doing now is we just pop in the pedals into the holes just to give the pedals something to bite to and then from there we'll add details such as clutch cables and stuff like that on the, the pedals. So as you can see this job is quite fiddly too um, a good pair of tweezers is always good um, with this job just because you've got a bit of extra hold over the part so you're not trying to get in there with your fingers um, and not having enough room to move the, the parts around to get into the proper position So as you can see there, this is the final parts and the final fitment of um, the conversion to the cab. This has been quite a tricky but yet fun conversion to do. Um, I do urge anyone to try it yourself. Um, it is quite tricky and does take a little bit of patience. As you can see there, um, fitting the steering column can prove a bit difficult. But as I say, I, I really enjoyed doing this and it was something a bit different. Um, what I'll do in the next video is I'll go back through and I'll replace any details that I've lost in um, the conversion. So as you can see, the last little bits of glue going on there. Thank you for joining us for this one and we'll see you in the next video.